Hey kids, it's Dreth James, and I'm just trying to explain. So we're looking at Dinotherium, these guys here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a special request, make sure you got the names right, uh, from Crows, our doctors, two weeks ago, and also Griffin, Dale, Allenson, both requested Dinotherium, so here we are. Now, I only have two because it's a prehistoric mammal, and there's not a lot of prehistoric mammal models, but my first one actually is this one here. And I remember I got this one at the Houston Gym, no, sorry, the Humble Civic Center, Jim Minnow's Strawberry Fall, and I went there to this little toy out area, and here's my first Dinotherium. Now, the name Dinotherium means terrible, as in dino, like dinosaur, terrible, therium means beast. So, think of it this way. You often see therium with mammals in the Cenozoic, so where you see sores with dinosaurs. There are stegosaurs and allosaurs and tyrannosaurs, uh, you know, like brachiosaurs. Well, with mammals, we have archaeotherium and... Uh, Paraceratherium, all you know, that's that's like their the name you see to the most. Now that being said, what stands out about this guy the most, and I do say guy because the mammals are males or they have the parts, uh, is the tusks. Now, I believe almost all elephants, at least most elephants, elef or probos actually good point, proboscids. So what's going on here is a group called proboscids. Now, you're like, what, what do you mean? It's an elephant? Not quite. I'll tell you why in a minute. But the idea is that these tusk-like things come out of the lower jaw, not the upper jaw. And this is kind of funny because when they first found it, because modern proboscids have upper jaw structures, tusks, they mounted the skeletons kind of backwards or weird, but realized, oh no, it's actually kind of an out outlier because it has it on the, on the underside. So uh, what are the use of these things? The official answer is we don't know. But the number one cons uh, hypothesis, I think, is, well, among others, is that they use them to uh, maybe dig on the ground for tubers, or to scrape bark off trees. You see, modern elephants and their relatives uh, usually they're tough for getting food some way. I mean, yeah, they're for defense as well, but we assume everything is defense. Some, most likely the, the job of an animal is to eat, sleep, poop, and make more of itself. So the idea is that these, you know, getting food is a big part of that. So this one, uh, now, things to point out with this guy in particular are the ear size. Now, in general with elephants today, we see that they have, uh, the, the African elephant has larger ears than the Asian elephant. The African elephant lives in the open savanna in Africa, right? And the idea is that they flap their ears and, with the, and they can cool off like 10 degrees. It's, it's a, you know, a big change in temperature. Uh, Asian elephants are living in, in usually forested areas, covered areas, so they have smaller ears. Uh, there's no way to really know how big the ears were because there's not like huge muscle attachments on the head for the ears for the most part. So the idea is that we often see other proboscids shown with smaller ears, um, you know, so we can figure out they have larger ears or not, right? Uh, also, I want to point out the trunk size. Uh, again, the trunks are very low and low and flat. Whereas, sorry, the skull is very low and flat. Whereas, like the the um, the ma woolly mammoth is an upper, you know, a, a, a boss up here. So the idea here is that we're not sure how long the trunk is. It's often depicted with this kind of medium-sized trunk. It could have been shorter. It could have been longer. We don't know. Um, this one is from I remember Bully Land, right? Yes. And this one is from Mojo. This is a gift of. Uh, with Dancer Park uh, in Bastrop, my old friends. You'll see them in the comments below. And um, I got this as a gift from my mother-in-law. And again, you can see the same thing here. The tusks are going down. And like I said, uh, it's what makes this easier to understand is that they're 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 close to elephants, right? They're not elephants, but they're close to elephants. So how does that work? Okay. So I often compare dinosaurs and crocodiles a lot of times in my talks. And dinosaur, like a, like a Tyrannosaurus or a Velociraptor, they're closer to a bird than they are to a crocodile. Well, these guys are closer to modern elephants than they are to other animals, but they're still not elephants. Now, I'm gonna explain that with their family lineage real quick. Uh, the first thing I wanna point out is this is a, a relative of theirs, a distant relative. And the term proboscid re refers to the, a large growth, like, like a large nose, basically. So, thinking about proboscis monkeys have really big noses, or the, uh, the part of a bug that kind of like a mosquito or a uh, butterfly come out, proboscid. So basically, these guys have trunks, to, for the most part. And one of the earlier ones we ha I have in toy form, at least, is this guy here. It's called Amblodon. Uh, if you ever go to the Museum of Natural Science, there's a plenty of Belodon, which is the same kind of thing. There's a, there's a skeleton and a picture of being chased by a Megalodon in, in the shallow water. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, these are called shovel tuskers, the nickname, because the tusks on the bottom are all big and flat like shovels, and no one knows why, like why that's a thing. So the idea here is that they may you see some kind of weird vegetation, but they have tusks on the bottom and on top. Another relative are gompotheres. These guys here have two on top, two on the bottom. 
that's seen a lot in, in this like the Miocene time frame. Right, speaking of that, these guys live from the Miocene to the early Pleistocene or Ice Age, right? So pretty pretty cool range for an animal. And so what's going on here is that they're a different type of proboscid, an earlier type of proboscid than these guys are. So like they're all branching off different groups. Now, one you may recognize is the, the American mastodont, and mastodont's, um, the name mastodont means uh, breast tooth because a tooth, for some reason, looked like a, a lady. I don't understand. But the idea is that they have sharper teeth for eating leaves. They're browsers. Whereas the woolly mammoth, for example, has flat teeth for grinding grass. Now, there are other mammoths. There's the Columbia mammoth that are here from Texas. Uh, we didn't have woolly mammoths in Texas. It was so hot, even in the ice age in Texas, that they, we did have all the mammoths down here. They were South Dakota, no, they were the Dakotas and going north by the glaciers. Whereas here we have Columbia mammoth. There are no toys of Columbia mammoth. Uh, many of the proboscis don't have toys or models, so fine dinotheria was a big deal. Now, what's really neat too is that our modern proboscis are the Asian elephant you're seeing here and the African elephant you're seeing here. So, what's the big deal? Well, these guys, the Asian African elephant, are in the family Elephante. So, they're elephants, right? So is the woolly mammoth. They are in the elephant family. Dinotheres are a different family. They're not typically elephants. Now, to the average person on the street, elephant. Very similar body plan, very design, but they're not actual ele elephants. It's kind of a big deal for us because it's like calling, uh, you know, you look at the oviraptor, they're not dromaeosaur raptors. They're not like the ones we've seen, you know, Jurassic Park style raptors. They're a different kind of animal, but they're similar in name or similar appearances, but they're still branching off. Well, the idea is that Dinotherium here, these guys are not true elephants, but they're closest to modern elephants in the fossil record, right? And I've been thinking that the, uh, this one here, again, what's, so what's really fun about this is looking at the animal, you can see, you know, I mean, the, the artistic recreation borrowed heavily, heavily from elephants because, you know, same kind of thing for the most part, officially. But again, there are a lot of things that we can't, fully know. And my example of this is the, uh, the documentary Prehistoric Planet. It just premiered last week. I, and I remember watching it with my wife and she was saying, do we know that? Do we know that? And I'm like, no, oh, not really. This is based on this, like that. And the idea, but the idea that I liked a lot about the documentary was it was a big, it showed the animals as animals. It showed these, there's all these weird things that paleontologists can, will probably never figure out the animals did in the fossil record. Like people, what do you, what keeps you up at night? For of our astronomers, it's like, I guess asteroids. But for me, as a paleontology person, it's like, there are things these animals did that we will never understand, these weird behaviors. So even though this animal looks like an elephant, has a very similar structure to an elephant, there's probably some kind of weird behavior or social cue that it may have had that we have we wouldn't understand and can't fossilize. But we can still compare lots with appearances. Now, that's where it sits on the family tree of proboscids. That being said, who lives with Dinotherium? Well, there was one of the, I think, Walking With documentaries, and it shows our ancestor Australopithecus being chased by one of these guys. Uh, ir ironically, the name Dinotherium means terrible beast. Now, we do know elephants can be aggressive, uh, you know, if they're threatened, they're, you know, their males are in heat, you know. But overall, elephants aren't just going around terrorizing creatures, you know. Um, I remember as a kid, I, when I saw the documentary, and they showed them walking, you know, running, it was just charging, charging, the bull. Uh, but in general, like, elephants are relatively peaceful compared to many animals. So, that being said, I mean, that's one idea to put out there. I mean, another animal that's really fun to, that I live with, not to scale, is the Clocotheres. These are, I always call them clawed horses. They're my favorite prehistoric mammal, and these guys uh, are closest to horses and rhinos. But they have these big claws on their, on their forelimbs, kind of like, like anteaters almost, but not as curved. So, uh, so, I mean, I always think of a horse with claws, except in multiple digits. So these guys were living where they are. Speaking of that, uh, Dinotherium, that was a weird noise. Dinotherium lived with, uh, in Africa. It lived in parts of Eurasia. So they had a pretty large range. And again, from like middle Miocene to early Pleistocene Ice Age. So these guys are, have a pretty good range of time. Um, and they also were not the largest mammal of all time, the well, largest land mammal. That would be this guy here, named Paraceratherium or Drugotherium and Walking Prehistoric Beast. These are, these are not the scale, but uh, these are rhinoceroses that got just really massive. The largest mammal of all, of course, is the blue whale, but on land, this guy is like the, the, the record holder. Uh, coming to a second or third place would be down Ethereum. They're bigger than modern African elephants, uh, at least you know, the bulls. So the question is, what's the biggest 
the second largest mammal. There's, there's, there's the Imperial Mammoth, the Columbian Mammoth, and this guy. It's one of those three years contender, depending on which skeleton or tooth or whatever you look at and do the scale. But in general, it's kind of a cool animal. And like I said, uh, there are a lot of prehistoric mammals that are even more unusual, very distant. I mean, these guys are, again, related to minor elephants. We can, we can extrapolate a lot from them. But I will tell you this, um, when we find mammoths, for example, or particularly, you know, Columbian mammoths, but in the case of woolly mammoths, uh, we associate the same lifestyle with elephants, where there, it, there's the females, the matriarchs, has a herd, and off, the offspring moving around, and the males being solitary. We say with ele modern elephants too. And in fact, uh, the, n the number one type of elephant found in tar pits would be the young males, because the females would see the, the tar pit and the, the grandmother would say, oh, we know that's, that's bad, we go this way. But for uh, a young male who's alone and in some water, we'll just go in tar pit, right? Uh, we do see that some male elephants today will bond, group, make little groups, like not with a roving gangs, but they hang out together. So um, I don't recall seeing any papers saying that we can see that kind of grouping with down there. So in fact, here in Texas at the, at the Waco, uh, this mammoth site, there was, it was like a where these rivers converged or came, you know, and you see like a, I wouldn't say nesting ground, they're not birds or dinosaurs, but you see these, all these female Columbia mammoths and their babies in this one area. It's kind of an unusual find. So you see that kind of behavior there, right? Um, but instead, we, you know, we can't tell that with these guys' behavior because one, they're not as close as these two guys. And two, they are, they are less of them found, comparatively speaking. So we can't compare them too much. But again, it's a cool animal worth noting. Dinotheres, like, like that's a new word for you, right? Dinotheres, appreciate it. That being said, I'll see you next week, my first pterosaur. Oh, right, YouTube wants me to tell you things. Uh, to push one of the boxes or circles, and it will say to subscribe, or share, or tell a friend, because uh, I literally do this for fun. I have like a full-time, overtime job that I spend time doing all kind of stuff at the museum and other places, and my own personal business that I do stuff at too so like if you have an idea comments whatever let me know again this is a request uh, I do have videos shot for like to, to July actually but in because Jurassic World's new toys have come out but anyway but tell us in the comments and the, the boxes or so, whatever thank you Bye.